Hindi hello and welcome to episode 64 of Friends of the Show. I am Stephen W. Skinner and this is my podcast where I chat with some of the funniest people from the internet. This week's friend is one of the most beloved Twitter folks, a very funny Twitter jokester who's been a staple of the joke community for years. I'm of course talking about at Wajo talking about on Twitter. Now this was a very fun one. Lots of chuckles, maybe too many. We get into what was happening in the early days of Twitter, get deep on our love of candy, and most of the episode is dedicated to answering some great questions from a cavalcade of really great listeners. So thank you so much for everyone who sent in a question. And now, it's Friends of the Show, episode 64, with what Joe talking about. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Oh, it sounds great. So not much of a okay, good. Not much of a sound check required, I guess. Okay, I want to hear it anyway. A one, two, check. Level sound good. <laughs> now, Perfect. Now you have to say which. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, check one, two, one, two. Check one, two. Good? Yep, sounds good. Now, right. Yeah, what else did some people say? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and a one, and a two. One, two. Uh, I need, <laughs> need more snare in my headphones. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. nope, sounds good. So the play the theme, and thusly the podcast will begin. Ooh. Okay. Diggity, here we go. <laughs> this week's friend is one of the funniest on Twitter and has been doing it for years. She's a Super Mario 2 loving mom from Georgia mm-hmm. and a cornerstone of the Twitter Joe community. Uh, <laughs> my records indicate that I gave her a Fave Star trophy in 2016, <laughs> so you know we go way back. And I'm so happy to have her on the podcast. And a lot of listeners are also visibly excited for this week's guest. I'm talking about Joe at what Joe talking about? And welcome, Joe. <laughs> Hi, thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for being on the guest uh, on the podcast. This is very exciting for me to have you on. Such a, an original Twitter joke mm. uh, hero of the <laughs> community. <laughs> You're killing me right now. Uh, yeah. Well, you've been <laughs> doing you. it since I know. I looked up on the thing. It says you joined Twitter in 2015. Mm-hmm. So what were you doing in October 2015 that made you hop on the old <sighs> tweet machine? Well, um, I had tried Twitter a couple times before. I think I had like four or five different handles and I never tweeted anything. I didn't get it. I didn't get how to do it. And I was on Facebook forever And it was somewhere around that time on Facebook, it got really political. And it was when the cousins started replying on things and making it like (laughs) super weird and things that weren't even like, it's just pictures of my kids or telling a joke and I couldn't take it anymore. And I wanted to go somewhere kind of anonymous where my mother-in-law couldn't see me say bad (laughs) words or, you know, like, like I was looking for somewhere to hide. And for whatever reason, that time when I made it, it just worked. So under your current what you're talking about handle, mm-hmm. <laughs> you yeah, mean? I don't, I don't even want to know what the other ones were. If this is the one that <laughs> that worked, the, well, that's so good. Long. So you had other iterations. Um, mm-hmm. So what were you doing those first times before you started? Uh, telling jokes I guess I think I was just you know what everybody does I was like looking at bands and celebrities maybe (laughs) um just scrolling but I I didn't like I was trying to like double dutch in somewhere and I didn't know where right and it wasn't until 2015 that I kind of figured it out and you figured out that the best place for you was telling jokes, in the, <laughs> trying to like, telling really, jokes really, online, really trying to in the old joke corner of Twitter, which we love. So glad, mm. to, glad you made the trek over there uh, from banned Twitter, <laughs> whatever <laughs> right, you're doing. Whatever that is. Hashtag Twitter, uh, right? Yeah, we all, you know, everyone starts off doing one thing in Twitter until they find out what they right. what they were and meant to. Do. Even with this account, like I feel like I didn't even really fully get engrossed into joke Twitter until about a year and a half ago. Um, Before that, it was kind of 
willy nilly around with Dave Star and poetry stuff, but I didn't get more serious about it until about a year and a half ago. Wow. And then since then, amazing mm-hmm. stuff. <laughs> that means a lot to me because I look at my stuff and I just think like, <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm like, I don't, I don't think it's, you know, you know, you know, that's how everybody uh, yeah, is. Yeah. Well, especially with older stuff, I can for sure see that. Right. It's right. Like stuff it where you're like, oh, <laughs> yeah, I want to die. <laughs> I mean, everyone gets that. Yeah, sure. I think that's why time hop was invented. I know Twitter doesn't have mm-hmm. a time hop, but if it did, thankfully, yeah, thank goodness, because <laughs> we were Ooh. like, ah, oh, everyone from two years ago, even like starting two years ago or further Ooh. back, I'm like, oh man, <laughs> it's true. Yeah, yeah, everything I did two years ago was bad. <laughs> it's true. But yeah, I guess you sure. know that happens to everybody. So, mm-hmm. so you migrated off Facebook. Are you still? tenuously connected to facebook you still have a i I mean like i go over there and probably like once a year i'll change my profile picture so everyone knows i'm alive (laughs) okay and like i'll update like some stuff about the kids i have four children and so i'm like they're alive too my husband is good nothing's going on and then i won't touch it for a year it's kind of like a dusty storage bin of pictures that's kind of like the only reason i go over there right is to like grab some pictures that are just hanging out yeah like a lot of good albums from when you maybe used it more yeah <laughs> we just like put everything For on sure. there well what do you, are you mm-hmm. on uh instagram now is that where you're putting your pictures now <laughs> well so instagram i have the weirdest instagram i just started it a couple months ago because people were tagging you know screenshots of my tweets yes And so I just wanted, it's kind of this, like, I don't even, like, I feel like it's like a shadow Instagram. It's like, I don't really have like a lot of pictures. I like to take pictures of weird things like laundry or um, my recycling bin and I'll like make it filtered and kind of weird looking, (laughs) but it's not personal you know it's not like a personal page but I just wanted like a so if somebody tagged me then you'd my page would come up and then like my link to my twitter just kind of like trying to filter it back if I could yeah that's that's a good point because a lot of people a lot of tweets get uh, screenshotted and shared Mm -hmm. around on all the other social medias uh you Mm -hmm. know everywhere from reddit from to Mm -hmm. facebook (laughs) to whatever weird meme pages and stuff (laughs) weird like yeah meme ag- aggregator pages um but a lot right. of it is on instagram because that's where everyone has gone to that's where mm-hmm. all the the actions at so the good right. jokes from twitter and everything they make their way over mm-hmm. uncredited a lot of the time sometimes right. it'll be a right. crop of the full tweet with the name but like no link or anything you can't really put links on instagram right. And people were sending me like, oh, this was on Instagram. This was on Instagram. And I'm like, well, okay. Like, I don't really know, (laughs) you know, like what I'm supposed to do with this information. So I was hoping like at the very, very, very least there'll be an at and they can click on it or something like that. Yeah, no, it's good to have someone be like, if I I saw that, it's very funny. Saw one of your tweets Mm -hmm. on uh, Instagram. It was very funny and want to be able to find you. If it was mm-hmm. uh, easy, then yeah, that's uh, that's good. And and then for people, to, those meme aggregators, some of them do like to give credit. And if so, right. then they can tag you, uh, right. and then you at least have your link in bio to something. Get. Yeah, something you like want that, that, that sweet thing. sweet follow at the end of the day. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> <laughs> right, I know, and I gotta tell you, since I made Instagram, I've probably gotten zero, totally zero. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it's not it what it's really about. But uh, <laughs> it's, it's good that you uh, are a little bit aware of, you know, when people are sharing your stuff on Instagram. It's For it's sure. kind of crazy. For I sure. mean, they took they took away the uh, the numbers. You used to be able to see the raw Ooh. numbers when you checked any Instagram post of who mm-hmm. who liked it and how many likes. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, they kind of they took that away. Twitter was talking about taking that away, but they did not yet. Wait, as of right. the time of this recording. <laughs> <laughs> right. They still right. leave up all the numbers. I don't know. I kind of would be okay with it, as unpopular as that is. Mm-hmm. Um, just because I, I like that. I like when the tweets stand by themselves. You know, because yeah. so often I do think that people look at the numbers and whether and and I see like some some jokes that I make, people will like it and retweet it. But then they're still DMing me and adding me and saying, what does this mean? 
but <laughs> they're like, I want to get this. What does this mean? But oh, they've already they, liked they it, already... it. And I'm like, yo, you know, first of all, if you don't just keep going, you don't just leave me behind. You don't need me to explain it, you know? Yeah. But like at the same time, I'm like, well, I know it's because the people around you like it. That's really so you. You want to get it, you know? Yeah. No, that's really so weird. I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really mind. Like, get rid of it, get rid of the yeah. numbers, and so much of the anxiety I see is people talking about this. This one didn't take right. off fast enough, and it's all about getting the big, big numbers right away. And well, I think, I'm more of like a slow burn. I think right, <laughs> you're like a cult favorite. Yeah, uh, I was, it'll get somewhere like eventually. You know, it's fine. Yeah, if it is good, you know, it'll it'll right. make its way back around. And people right. find it. I find that that's true. I think that's really weird that the, your theory was pro- has been proven in your anecdotal evidence where <laughs> it's like, oh, they didn't even understand the joke, but they retweeted mm-hmm. it because they saw it had a lot of retweets mm-hmm. and likes. And they're like, this is clearly a popular joke that people like. Right. I would absolutely prefer like if you don't get it don't touch it and just let it die and then i'll know if it makes sense yes you that know? is it's that is like, the don't uh give me a pity like and retweet if it's not good let it go yeah it's and the market I, theory it's, it's good for me to know yeah that's the free market of the twitter right like how right. it should work is <laughs> if you like it you like it hit slam that like and if you really like it slam that retweet right. well that's how i am you know yes it, like that's how i kind of curate my timeline it's just stuff you know if it's on there i think it's funny yes yeah and that's mm-hmm. how it should be you know for the most part but everybody mm-hmm. does twitter their own way it's really I yeah didn't so you've that. been around you know this what <laughs> sort of crazy yeah what sort of crazy seven. stuff have you seen what have what are people doing that you've seen and you're just like what like people what? who mm-hmm. it used to be like people who would quote tweet a lot and just be like, uh, I I don't I don't know why this is funny. And be like, okay. Oh, I love when they're like, um, yeah, I don't know why I'm laughing at this. Um, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I like. I don't. I'm also. I don't know. I get. I sometimes I, it doesn't even bother me, and other times for whatever reason that poor soul <laughs> has to hear it from me. You know, it's like it depends on the day. Yeah. Caught you on but a bad I'm like, day. really? Like, did you need to do this? I'm just meeting them at work outside, and mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, you know, that kind of hurt my feelings. I exactly. don't know. Exactly, and like I think that that's something that that's something that everybody uh, always forgets until it's like on them. When you're just like, oh, something right. someone online said it hurt my feelings, and I don't appreciate it. But it's like that person. <laughs> Also didn't think anything of it and was like, oh, it's just like maybe they were having a bad day and they didn't even think it was that bad to say. And it's like everyone thinks we're all doing our own thing. (laughs) We're We're all in our own movie and like Mm -hmm. it it didn't matter at all to that person. And it mattered a lot to you because of how it hit. We're all the main character. Yeah. Yeah, we're all the it's protagonists. All happening to us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess that's just how it be. <laughs> I've heard that somewhere. All right. Well, uh, I got I, you got a lot of questions, so we do have to get into really? those pretty okay. soon. But uh, okay. a couple more things okay. I wanted to talk about: okay. the uh, Super Mario Two. Why that one? <laughs> okay, because I love it. That was my favorite game when I was little. Did you not get um, the other ones? Did you only have that one? I did. I mean, <laughs> I I feel preemptively shamed yes. about the other ones right now. And I'm just going to ignore that. And I'm going to talk about <laughs> Super Mario 2 because I did. I, I had all of them. I had a Nintendo in my room. and I But just oh, wow. so you know, I stopped at Super Nintendo. I didn't get into the... Sega or anything like that. Mm -mm. I, um, because somewhere around there I discovered boys, you Mm. know, like, so it was like I was in my room and then after that I was out of my room. But like, um, so the Super Nintendo, I, I loved the first one. I loved the third one. I loved Mario Kart, but it was the second one. I don't know. Like, I know that it's different. I know like the story behind it and how it came to be, but for me, it was the princess. Like when I was little, uh, okay. I just thought that was the coolest thing, you know, because before that it was Mario or Luigi. And this time I was like, oh, there's a girl. I you know? get it. And so 
I would sit there with my headphones on, listening to Paul Abdul or like whatever mixtape a sister passed down for me just for hours. And nice. so when I got I, that picture in my header is actually my television screen oh, because wow. <laughs> for Christmas I got one of those little, you know, all in one Nintendo deals. You oh, yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. They're really cool. We have like all of them now. And I have literally only played Mario 2 like this whole time. <laughs> also, I'm not good. So oh, okay. I, like, I've never beat it. I've never beaten any game. I'm just really happy to be here, you know? <laughs> well, that's good. You're playing mm-hmm. it for the pure in- yeah. enjoyment of it. Well, good luck. One day I, I know you'll beat it. Uh, <laughs> one of those bucket list items. I know. I know. I'm just, you know, I'm just happy to be a part of it for sure. I think I have a some sort of bias against that one because I didn't get that one. Like I never had Super Mario Two. I only played it at okay. friends' houses. I had all the, wow. I had the other ones. Like I got mm-hmm. Super Mario Bros. Super Mario Three was a huge one uh, when it came out, and other ones. But Super Mario Two, I never got. I yeah, was never good at it. <laughs> I didn't like. Right. I didn't like the <laughs> pulling uh, stuff out of the ground thing uh, uh, that's all i know you know i'm from the other side of the track but i uh, i can appreciate your uh why you liked it so much with the representation mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it's great it's a popular thing now with uh, more people getting great representation so mm-hmm. it, it works people it's it real, <laughs> it <is> real. <laughs> it's real For sure. all right we should also mention the bt140 podcast shout out to <laughs> del freaky so this is why? a podcast that is the <laughs> why first would you mention that it's the first podcast that i was on it okay okay me too first and only podcast i was on other than this one <laughs> so okay, right on. shout out to del freak i think it was on one of the last ones it was sort of like okay. fizzling out then but uh what was your experience i was on there um i had my own show and then i guess posted one and then there was some kind of special or something where there was like a bunch of different squares on the screen <laughs> right and, yes um and it was fine i was a little weird because i i would i don't want to like be in like people watching me talk is like weird right. so the, you know yes. like <laughs> and i can't see them but they can see me so that was that was like a little bit weird, but that feels like nom. That feels like a long time ago. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, it was a long time ago. So, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know what year that would have been. Uh, that I was on that twenty sixteen, maybe. Yeah, or yeah, so. I think that's the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so a few years back, and yeah, so it was the the premise was there was there was like a Del Freaky was the host, and usually there was a co host who was like another Twitter person, right? And then a guest who mm-hmm. would come on and they would talk about uh, Twitter, and you'd play songs in between, um, right. and it was all on a video chat, so everyone had like mm-hmm. you're saying the squares, uh, and then so, so right. sometimes there was a lot of squares on because at the end everyone can join the chat, right? And everyone is uh, it was like a big video chat it was uh, it's kind of it was fun it was cool yeah yeah i i didn't love it because there was always the really gross questions and that is just not my thing you know so that was always kind of like i'd be like don't ask anything (laughs) gross like because i won't retweet anything gross like that is like the that's like my one Mm. of my like retweeting rules is like, or even like drafting. I'm like, I won't help someone. So I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to need to kick you over to somebody else because that's gross. <laughs> it embarrasses me. Okay. You know? Interesting. So, mm, yeah. I mean, hey, don't yeah. ask me gross things that don't embarrass me. <laughs> Man got to have a code, right? Yeah. You got to, uh, <laughs> got to do what's right for you with your, uh, right. Thank you. Creativity. I don't judge it. There's an audience for everything. It's just not me. Yeah, just not for you. That's, yeah. That's cool. Um, so you just mentioned drafting. So you helping people come mm-hmm. up with jokes now? Yeah. I mean, that is that is like my single most favorite part of Twitter mm. is um, collaborating with people. Yeah, well, yeah, I like it. Um, not so much for my tweets because <laughs> <laughs> I, I do think mine are garbage. But um, and I do get help from some really great people who are way better at this than me. But I do like, um, you know, the little rooms and especially if anyone's just starting out because I needed help. I never really considered 
drafting or kind of like crafting a joke, like I said, until about like a year and a half ago. So um, that was really fun for me. And it was, and so now it's fun to get um, some smaller, like newer accounts, I mean, and that don't really know how to be or, you know, they, everybody starts with really long jokes. I love cutting them down and that kind of thing is super fun. That really kind of keeps me coming back. I like that. It it feels like, I don't want to say rewarding because it doesn't matter if their tweets do well, but I literally, like I have four kids. One of them has special needs. He needs 24 seven care. I can't get out of the house a lot. And so that kind of, um, that's very social for me. Yeah. Sounds like you're uh, a great yeah. resource for the joke telling community. So, hey, <laughs> listeners, get at her. <laughs> no, I'm like, I, and all of my friends are way better. They're way better than I just enjoy it. Yeah, but you know? clearly you've cultivated a great crew, obviously. So yeah. So that's would, what's so good. I think so. I, I think so. so too, because judging by Z's questions, uh, I think uh, a lot of top tier folks coming out for these questions here. <laughs> so I think we better get into the okay. questions from Twitter, everyone's favorite part of the show, and uh, for some people, most of the show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it depends on how many questions they get, and you got a lot so let us get okay. into them thank you to everyone who sent in a question happens. to at fots pod on twitter and the first question oh it comes to us from pigeon fancier i'm talking about mm. friend of the show isabel zatun mm-hmm. at isabel mm-hmm. zatun on twitter one of the best so funny Thank you. You gotta check out her hilarious uh, comedy stylings if you're in the Toronto area. Hack Couture. Check it out. Mm. All right. And the question posed by Isabel is, what is your absolute favorite thing to talk about and why? Hmm. Um, it's funny because I was looking at the questions and I felt like that was the hardest that's why I'm I put so it first because I was like, <laughs> oh, well, then I'll know what I, I should know. have asked about <laughs> before the questions. Um, I mean, really, it told, for me, it really depends on the person I'm talking to. You know, like I enjoy um, getting to know people, getting to know new people, you know, and kind of their story and where they're from. That's really exciting to me. Hmm. And so... Um, I like, I would say I like talking with people about their experiences, I guess. Does that make sense? It sure does. So if you had to talk okay. to you, what would you want to talk to yourself about? Uh, I'm with me all day. I am totally over me. <laughs> You're sick of it. You know, <laughs> I'm like, Ugh. we would just sit silently on Twitter together, me and myself. Hmm. Hmm. Well, that's. I feel like that wasn't good enough. Well, I'm trying to think <laughs> if it was good enough. If Isabel's listening and is like, "Hmm, okay. is she trying to wriggle out of this?" <laughs> <laughs> I am. I am all day. Um, but okay, so a couple of things that I I know that I do talk about a lot would be obviously my family. I love talking about. You know, I like telling stories. So any funny things from my childhood, I love that. I'd turn a lot of that into tweets. And um, I talk about autism a lot. That's what one of my sons has. And um, so anything that I'm really fluent in, you know, like anything that I'm really passionate about is fun to talk about. And I kind of go a mile a minute. Yeah. And so I would like to be polite. If you would let me and take a step back and <laughs> say, I would like to talk about other people. Right. You know? Okay. I gotcha. Well, I think that was okay. a, a, thank a, you. a nice a diplomatic answer. And thank you. <laughs> thank you to Isabel for oh. the great uh, probing question. <laughs> we tried to probe. We got what we got. All right. So mm-hmm. thank you very much. And the next question comes to us. Oh, from the obscure gent himself, Yay. James Alvarez. Love and James. we've talked about him in the last few episodes. He's great. You got to check him out at Obscure He's Gent, great. the Obscure Gentleman Empire. Check him out. Get mm-hmm. the merch. Read the comics. Aaron and James, mm-hmm. they're doing it all. I think your header and your picture on Twitter is Obscure Gent. My Abby oh, is by yeah. his brother. 
obscure Aaron. And James has been a best friend for many years. And he's got the battle um, on Twitter, which is way super fun. He does, and we've mentioned on other uh, podcasts, the huge Twitter tournament of champions Mm -hmm. where teams and individuals compete against each other and with each other, creating tweets based on topics, and it's great every year. Uh, you got to check it out. Mm -hmm. I'm like, can I say that I've won it? (laughs) <laughs> yes, that's a huge thing. We should have mentioned that. I should have done my research a little bit better. Congratulations. Team, and I'm only bragging. I'm only bragging because I tried so hard for so long and so years. <laughs> like, just let me have this. No, it's a huge achievement. It's very difficult to win. Thank I don't you. know how many people uh, I know. Like have tried it, and failed. It like, was really hard. Oh, man. It is a. Uh, it's anxiety. It's a serious accomplishment. It's a dedication. Like it's, you have to be ready to tweet mm-hmm. something funny and good about the specific topics. It's like you got to be really mm-hmm. on. It is, a, it is a serious challenge. I think it's special because the judges aren't on Twitter. They don't see your Abby. They don't know your at, and they don't know if your tweet did well. It's just text to text, mm-hmm. and so that um, that makes it even trickier. You know, because sometimes you really can kind of fall back on your brand. Um, and in the battle, you can't. Like, you have to be objectively. It has to be a good tweet. So it, I think it's special. It is. Yeah, that is a good point because of the third-party judging system, let's say. Right. It really makes right. it uh, interesting. And, yeah. yeah, so shout out to James for that <clears throat> and for this question. Mm-hmm. What flavor of Big League Chew is your favorite? And what new flavor will you invent when you become Empress of the World? (laughs) Um, I love Big League Chew. Um, I love all candy. I always have candy in my purse. I'm always eating candy. And Big League Chew is my favorite gum. And it's really hard to pick a favorite flavor, but I'm going to have to say grape. Um, mm. because that's the most available, but every now and then I'll get a cotton candy, um, which I also love. Watermelon is great. Like I feel like, <laughs> um, shout out to Big Weed Chew. Big um, Weed Chew, if you're listening, you I, need yeah, to send I, some I'm samples. Yeah, I love it. And, um, but I would say grape, but to, if I could invent a flavor, it would, I don't know. I think I would want like a mix, like a rainbow of all the flavors would be good or like a mystery Big League Chew, like they do with Airheads, would be exciting. <laughs> okay, so you are, new you are I'm really Empress. into... Uh, I want two new flavors, Mystery and Rainbow. To the lab! <laughs> mm-hmm. So Big League Chew is your favorite. Um, what are some of your other go-to? If we reached in your purse right now, what candies are we pulling out? You're going to pull out five of those big gourmet lollipops. I keep like those on, you know, the big comically ones large, something that you <laughs> yeah, might like see big, a like nineteen odd t- toddler. <laughs> not, not like the swirly ones, although now I want one. But like you know, like the they are at like you know CVS or Walgreens or Lowe's. Like they're always at the counter. So yeah, I always have about four or five in cotton candy, watermelon, all of those. I also have a Twix. I always have a Snickers and lollipops. Usually lollipops. 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 Definitely big league chew. Such Mm -hmm. an interesting answer. It's like such a hard candy. I like fruity. Okay, yeah, because yeah, lollipops is not something that I would think of as like a go-to candy. But although it's a Def by definition, like a go-to candy. Like, it, <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me, but but you, but know, you don't like see I people said. with lollipops. But when when my kids get in the car and I pick them up at in carpool and they've had a bad day, there's nothing better than a lollipop. You know, it's like that's what you get at the bank. It's always been really special. Like if I got a lollipop in my Halloween bag and I was little that was special I think they're special candy it changes the day okay yeah I get it I mean there's mm-hmm. different levels so what I'm picturing are like the, the swirly ones but you're talking about like the little just like a like a little green one just like okay 
Don't insult me with this, okay? I'm not, I'm not like, sure, because when you said at the bank, like, they give them to you at the bank. That is it's just the another little, form of lollipop. It's like the little one. Those are the suckers, we call them. Except, except the only lollipop that I won't eat, or I won't eat all the way, is a Tootsie Pop. Like, get out of here. <laughs> oh. Like, I don't even want to hear about a Tootsie Pop. Um, Ooh, but I might fired. eat just the outside, and then I'll be like, get out. Like, go on. You need to know how many licks to get to the center of the Tootsie Pop so that you don't get zero. to that many licks. There's zero. It's disgusting. <laughs> I don't know why anyone would want to get there. No, you need to you know, know how like, many literally. licks so that you can just do one less and never make <laughs> it to the center. Me too. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. So if anybody knows. So it gets too like. Some listeners uh, might know, might have some inf- inside info on uh, the Tootsie Pop situation. But, <laughs> hey, I'm with you. Get that garbage out of okay. here. <laughs> Get out of here. It's gross. But um, all the other lollipops. So are you a, um, a left yeah. Twix or a right Twix? Am I a left Twix or right Twix? Um, I switch it up. I, oh, I'm, no I'm allegiance. Twix. Yeah, no, it's. It's either way, but I do eat them weird. I like to eat the t- like only when I'm alone. Like I'm not, not in front <laughs> of people. I'll eat it the right way. But when I'm alone, I'll eat the chocolate and caramel first, and then the cookie. Oh, so like a top um, down. That, type but thing? that's like that's like a private <laughs> Twix kink for the home. That yeah. is wild. I always love to hear people's different ways of uh, consuming things, and that is a that is a great <laughs> one. Okay. <laughs> the top if down. I'm like out, if I'm out and about with a Twix, I'm going to eat it the right way. You I got to do make normal, everyone uncomfortable. Yeah. A normal bite off the top or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, thank you very much, James, for those great questions. And you got to check mm-hmm. out the Obscure Gentleman Empire. Yeah. Go buy mm-hmm. a shirt. Mm-hmm. All right, the next question comes to us from another great tweeter. I'm talking about Ray at Sir Eviscerate on Twitter. Yay. It's Ray. Love Ray. He was excited mm-hmm. when he heard that you were going to be on the pod, and so he Yay. has asked this question of you, and the question okay. is, when you twirl, is it mm-hmm. clockwise or counterclockwise? You know, I had to think about this because when I read it, I was standing there and I twirled. And then I was like, am I on the clock? Or am I looking at the clock? Are you facing me? But I decided that it's counterclockwise no matter what. Yes, that is that is how I pictured it as well and in my mind mm-hmm. how I would twirl. Mm-hmm. So yes. that is a that is like a leading with your right hand going to the left. Like I'm going to right yes, to I'm left. going to the left. Mm-hmm. Right around to the left. So that is a counterclockwise motion. And mm-hmm. uh, so we should get into the twirl business. You're twirling all over the place. What's with the twirls? <laughs> Aren't you dizzy? You're twirling oh, all yeah, over yeah. people's timelines. I know. And it's very silly. And um, it's because it started, um, you know how people go like, but like. <laughs> I do. With the drums. <laughs> they do do that, yeah. You know, and so. I was when I was twirling um, a long time ago with friends in rooms. Um, I was talking about like twirling my drumsticks, oh, like and so okay. when I would own someone, I would right. go twirls, and I would do that gif. Got it. You know, yeah. and then it, and then I then I kind of like when I was hanging out with other people and saying it, they they were picturing me twirling in a circle, yeah. and that kind of stuck. So it was a yeah, some confusion, silly. and now mm-hmm. we're in a world where you're just twirling instead of I'm twirling. Twirling a drumstick. I like stick. it. Um, <laughs> I like to twirl, and I'm such a creature of habit. Like I have my words that I say over and over, <clears> and and that's just one of them. That's like my catchphrase. I feel very comfortable within a catchphrase. Yeah, and I think that's great because you know online you got to sort of distinguish yourself and have a voice right. and be clear or, or a brand as some people mm-hmm. would say and the brand is strong clearly right the brand oh, is man. twirling i hope so i try i, I really try <laughs> well sort of it yeah i mean if it comes off natural you're you tend to, cool. to twirl like you you use the same uh the same verbiage and uh right. language and lexicon uh, mm-hmm. over and over people get familiar with it and i think it's, right. it's you know it's part of the whole uh the whole yeah. uh, experience being a, right a joe fan 
<laughs> so if you were spinning a drumstick, is that clockwise or counterclockwise? Uh, Can you actually do it? Do you know? That's that's going to be um I don't know how I would describe it because I'm doing it with my fingers with <laughs> yeah. about drumsticks in my hands. Right. So I'm going to leave some mystery there. <laughs> you can decide. I, I was trying to. D- I can't give it all away. <laughs> I was trying to do it with a pen here. And as you can maybe hear, I just kept dropping it. I, yeah. was, I wasn't going to say anything because I was polite, but I was like, like he's what trying the it right now. What's going yeah. on with this guy? <laughs> professional podcast you be careful or you're gonna get my real laugh soon. i think this <laughs> like I'm yeah that. i'm gonna blame the pen the pen isn't the right it's not the right <laughs> thickness it's not <clears throat> anyways mm-hmm. clock counter counterclockwise okay. is the answer so thank you very much mm-hmm. ray for the great question thanks for listening <laughs> and the next question comes to us from friend of the show todd Spooky Carlos has got the Halloween name. I'm talking about at the Todd Williams, Mm -hmm. Canadian rock star, Mm -hmm. and he's got some questions. Three. I know, and I'm not singing. And here they are (laughs) in the numerical order that he has asked them. Number one, Georgia is known for peaches. Mm -hmm. How are you like a peach? How are you not like a peach? I think you are a peach, BTW. Thank you, Todd. I thought about that, and I am like a peach because I don't age very well. I think that was like the first thing that came to my mind. It's like, a little yeah, self dip. <laughs> yeah, and I and I have a pit in my stomach. <laughs> That's <laughs> good. Like, yeah, okay, I'm kind of peach. That's good. You're two for two. And then, um, and then I'm not like a peach because I'm not sweet. That's wow. right. I was like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sweet or fuzzy, <laughs> but I'm glad. I'm glad. Um, I'm glad he thinks I'm a peach. It really weirds people out when I tell them I'm from Georgia. I'm born and raised here, and they expect a southern accent. I was... and people get so disappointed. <laughs> I I'm not disappointed at all in uh, what your voice sounds okay. like, but I was expecting really? a southern accent, and I was. I was like, oh, what if I do a southern accent too? Right. Oh. But I, uh, I'm not going to because you don't have one, so <laughs> there's no need. No, I don't. <clears throat> but I'm I'm from um, right outside of the city of Atlanta. And so, and I've really been born and raised here. I love it here um, for the most part. And so when you're this close to we call it the perimeter of Atlanta, you're not going to have that really Southern accent. But when you start, you know, moving out in a radius around, it's going to get deeper and deeper and deeper in all directions. Wow. That's so interesting how uh, those accents work. I know we can all put one on though. And (laughs) my friends. Oh yeah. I just heard you slip into it a little bit. Yeah. (laughs) I can, I can slip into it real good, but I went to private school and I, I joked that I kind of smoked it out, you know, <laughs> like the accent. When I listen to stuff from when I was really little, you can hear it more. Um, but I, I like it. People here don't think I'm from here, which is mm. funny. But my kids don't have accents. My husband doesn't have an accent. You know, so I just I attribute it to being so close to the city. So there you go. That explains it. The listeners, in case mm-hmm. you were wondering, it's not I'm a filter. I'm telling you, people are going to DM me and be like, oh, I mean, people are very clear about that. And and it's funny because I'm like, do you read my tweets in a really Southern accent? That's a fun game that I like to play with friends. I'll read my tweets really Southern and it <laughs> changes the tweet completely. It's very strange. Wow. That's pretty wild. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, uh, maybe you can sing us a song in your best Southern accent. Because <laughs> Todd, Todd's you know, next I question. You. It's not <laughs> happening just because Todd asks. That doesn't mean he's going to get it. No, I'm Friend not. Friend of the show gets preferential treat- treatment here, so you should... <laughs> I'm a friend now. <laughs> yes, you are official I'm friend of the friend show. Now, and no means no. <clears throat> All right, I'm Todd. Not so prepared for that. <laughs> so his Again, question. Again, <laughs> let me have some mystery. <laughs> All right, I guess you got to maintain the mystery. So Thank sing, you. So the Thank the song you. you're going to be singing is "Building a Mystery" by Sarah McLaughlin. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's a 
that's my real laugh. You got it. Todd, you got it, you guys. That's it. Thank you, Todd, for that great next. question. All right, and the <laughs> next question, Todd's final question is going to be his signature question. And, of course, it is, if you were a member in KISS, what would be your makeup and personality deal thingy? Mm. You know, I don't love face paint. Well, that's going to be a problem um. with this. <laughs> Immediately, it's going to be a like, problem. Why can't I just be, you know, can I just be like a stagehand or like a roadie or like the sound guy? Like, why do I have to be in it? Like, I know it's not going to be Gene Simmons. Um, um, no, it can be whatever you know. want. What would the makeup look I, like? Uh, I'm going to be honest. I'm not even a huge Kiss fan, but I would say the cat. <laughs> like, okay, if I'm. But you can make one. up your own, is what I'm saying. It could be anything. Oh! It, it doesn't anything. have to be one of theirs. It can be your own okay. design. It doesn't have to be a okay. single star over your eye or a really? demon blaze. Okay. It doesn't have to be a weird cat face. It can be anything. It can be anything? Yeah, anything. And Okay. Yeah. Okay, I appreciate the question more because I was like, what the hell, Todd, <laughs> with his signature question. Okay, so if I could paint my face anything, <laughs> um... It would be... I'd imagine it'd still be in the kiss motif, you know? <laughs> I get it. You gotta, like, um, fit um, in. Okay, why don't I... I'll, I'll be a butterfly. Oh, that's a great one. Okay, that's so That's a I'll great a answer. That's probably the best answer for this signature question that we've got. Um, all right, all right. What do you think your outfit would look really? like? Really? <laughs> because I'm, um, I'm, I feel like I'm making it the hardest. Well, I'm absolutely wearing the platform shoes. Yeah. And I'm going to have huge wings. So silver and black uh, platform shoes and Absolutely. huge wings. Big, That's great. Big sparkly wings. I'm going to play the tambourine. Oh, perfect. And it's going to be awesome. Well, mm -hmm. that is a great answer. So thank you okay. very I'm much. I'm glad I that I could. It. Yeah, I feel like we kind of like went on a journey with that. <laughs> all for, and I hope it was worth it to Todd since I did not sing. Todd, hope you're having a great walk and enjoy <laughs> that answer. And thank you very much for your questions as always. And mm -hmm. the next question okay. comes to us from friend of the show, mm -hmm. Llama in a Tux. I'm talking about Kevin at Llama in a Tux on Twitter. <laughs> oh, we go, here we go. We got a Kevin question. Okay. It's about twirls. If you could twirl Goodbye. anywhere for any length of time... Where would it be? I would twirl. I would twirl at my great, great grandchild's wedding. That's my plan. Wow. So Tricky. For at least two songs. Right, yeah. Before I have to sit down. Yeah. That's Link, great. Time, place, that's it. Oh, that mm -hmm. would be great. Um, Thanks, Kevin. Thank you for that question, Kevin. At Llama in a Tux. Check him out for all your favorite <laughs> llama jokes. And I think he has a little kitty now. Aww. Shout out to the little kitty. <laughs> all right. I'll look it up. Let's keep these questions coming. And oh my okay. word. Wouldn't you know, it's a friend of the show question <gasps> coming in from Haunted Sweatpants Share at House oh, underscore Feminist. It's Morgan. Oh, Yay. such a great friend of the show. You got to go listen to her episode. Such fun. Uh, as of the time of this recording, it had just come out. <laughs> and, every, and everyone's loving it. So you better check it out, too. And here is the <sighs> question good. from Morgan. How are you okay. so hot and funny and cool? What's your secret? <laughs> I am none of those things. That is a trick question. Um, <laughs> I, I kicked it back to her. I was like, what's yours? Um, <laughs> uh, no, um, <laughs> my face is red. <laughs> um, I would, yeah, I wouldn't identify as hot, funny, or cool. No, oh, it's one of those compliments <laughs> disguised as a question. Oh, oh we've been fooled so again. Kind. So kind. Jeez. I'm asking no, for questions, secret. and these people are sneaking in compliments mm, as a question. <laughs> but if you had to say 
some secret to uh, your skincare routine or maybe your uh <laughs> no i am not good at makeup put, like, i'm not uh, good at any of that stuff egg whites in um, your hair or something your hair no, looks great no um <laughs> you tweeze your eyebrows no. uh, you got great <laughs> lip gloss maybe i don't know my face <laughs> Right now. <laughs> no, no. Um, I'm like, it's certainly not sleep. I don't get any of that. Um, I would say uh, my my kids keep me moving. There you go. You know? That's a good answer. So that's, yeah, so Morgan's that's, gonna that's appreciate it. that. Yeah, she gets it. She, she gets, gets it. it as a mom on the go. Mm-hmm. You'd get that if you listen to her episode. All right. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much, Morgan, uh, for that great question at House underscore Feminist. Just the best. All right. Now, the next question comes to us from a great question asker indeed and one of the most hilarious people who I've found recently. It is Mm. at Haley underscore HUD. (laughs) Oh, there we go. You recognize it. So funny. Absolutely. I only have discovered her recently, and I'm very glad that I did. And the questions are coming in. And Mm -hmm. she says, Joe, I L Y, which I believe in internet speak means I love you. you. Oh, that is Mm -hmm. sweet. The question is if you could spend entire day with Paddington, where would you go and what would you do? Well, I would say that we would have to, I want to be um, in London with Paddington. I want a matching rain outfit and we are going to stomp some puddles. That's my plan. Nice. Have you ever Mm -hmm. traveled abroad to London? No, I haven't. I would love to. That would be your first Um, time. Paddington showing you the sights. Yeah. He and I would go to the Beatles Museum, all of the things. All of those London-y mm-hmm. things, mm-hmm. but London mostly puddles. They're like, you mm-hmm. could have stayed home and jumped in puddles. No, but it, this is Paddington. <laughs> That's true. And the matching sure. outfits. Yeah. I want the, the hat, the, you know, the slicker, is that yes. what they call it? Yeah. I believe. The boots. Yeah. yeah. I want to get confused for Paddington. <laughs> yeah. All right, and the follow-up and final question from Haley. Hmm. If you played a celebrity in a biopic, whom would it be? (laughs) Um, I thought about this, and I was like, it would definitely be, it would have to be, you know, a privileged white woman who can't act so maybe scarlett johansson oh shots fired (laughs) (laughs) don't worry she probably isn't listening anybody cool anybody um you know i i'm like i i feel like (laughs) uh but i would say um in real life, <laughs> it would have to be like Stevie Nicks. She twirls. Oh, yeah. That's a that good twirler. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a great one. Mm-hmm. Hells yeah. I just needed, you know, I just needed to slip my Scarlett Johansson jab right. in there somewhere. Right, and you got you know? it. Cut yeah, her to the I bone. Oh, yeah. Clinched <laughs> it. Well, thank you very much, Haley, for those great questions. Thanks, and everyone should be following at Haley underscore HUD for just very funny tweets. All right, and the next question, oh my goodness, comes to us from Maeve. At Maven of Honor, mm. one of my favorites, oh, ethereal man. being. She sparkles. A ray of light, sunshine mm. reflected through a rainbow. All day. Into a mystical forest, <laughs> into the mm-hmm. eye With of an, an elf. amulet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Behind a secret waterfall. All of the things, so uh, yes. All of the things. One of my favorites, mm-hmm. so thank you so much, Maeve, for these questions. And here are some questions from Maeve. Great. If you could okay. be any flower, what kind would you be? What kind would I pick? Hey. Um, hey. I would be a magnolia flower because oh, <laughs> growing up, I had this big magnolia tree in my yard, and they smell so good, and 
they're the best climbing trees. And I would hide in this tree. Like if I got a bad grade (laughs) or if I didn't want to go to piano lessons, I would pretend like I was going and go and hide in this tree with these huge, they're really sturdy flowers. They're really beautiful. That's what I would be. Wow. What a great answer. Magnolia. Thank you. The movie starring Mm -hmm. Tom Cruise. Oh, yeah. All day. John C. Riley. I love it more than my luggage. Yeah. And others. Paul Thomas Anderson. All right. (laughs) The next question from Maeve. If you had to live in any year besides 2019, what year would you pick? So, like, my initial thought would be, like, the 60s, and then I thought about it. And I do love the 90s. Like, I was going through all of these decades in my head, and then I even went all the way back to, like, the Renaissance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, the, time. like, yeah, like, 1400 or something. And I was like, you know all of these times have not been perfect for women, you know, that it's like, they can, it's like, I feel like looking back from today all the way back. And so I was like, why would I want to go back when I could go forward? So I decided 2070, if the earth is still here. Oh yeah. That's um, right on the, right on the question mark. cusp. (laughs) Right. If the earth is still here, I feel like, well, the Earth will Every day the we're Earth. making progress. The Earth um, will be here. Then it, that will be, you know, we will be even farther yeah. than we are today. So I would say 2070. 2070. What a time to be alive. Maybe. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. Or maybe a Mad Max-like dystopian future. We don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We don't It'll know. It'll be better than today, I think. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, not great today, but I think Mad Max dystopian future <laughs> would be a little I'm bit like, worse. Hmm? Well, the generation's coming up. I, I see the kids. I see I've got a 14 year old, 12 year old, nine year old and seven year old. Oh, geez. And their friends like in their groups like these, this gen, like all of these kids coming up are really amazing. And they're going to do some really amazing things. And so I'm really looking forward to it. That is very exciting and great to hear. And we see Mm -hmm. some of it, uh, you know, represented in the news media. We got our Greta Thunberg. We got Mm -hmm. our uh, Parkland students and all those other great youths who are leading resistances around the world uh, now, I guess, because they have to because of all the bad bra stuff. I'm telling you, I feel like the, the people... The older generations that just really got it wrong, they're not going to be alive in 2070. And it's going to be all of these great kids coming up that are just so full of hope and love and equality and all of that. Shout shout out to the children. They're our future. (laughs) (laughs) You know. You know. 2070. We're counting on you. Or. (laughs) Yeah. Well, dystopian future either way hopefully they have flying cars mm-hmm. all right and the okay. final question coming from mave best worst halloween candy okay so you know i have a lot of candy in my purse and this is my everyday stuff you know so it's kind of like you have like the outfit you wear every day, like that's what you're comfortable with. But then you have like maybe your favorite fancy outfit Mm -hmm. and that is Halloween candy to me. And so it's stuff that I'm not going to get all the time, but I enjoy it when I have it. And so I would say like a classic Reese's peanut butter cup. Mm. Like I will never buy this for myself. Like I never think about it, but when I was little, that's what I wanted when I went trick-or-treating right like if I got a bunch of like the not and I'm not talking about like the mini cup <laughs> and I'm not talking about the you know the, the special the holiday or whatever, ones or the, you know yeah. and the pieces get out of here with the pieces <laughs> I don't want to hear about it but I'm talking just the plastic like the yeah. classic the cup. orange yeah you want the oh, cup yeah, yeah on, I could eat like 19 of them on Halloween Wow, that is a lot. <laughs> but that's a good one. So what would be the worst Halloween candy? You open up that pillowcase, you reach in, and you pull out a... 
those, you know, I, I, like- I know that I can just describe it. I don't know the name because they don't deserve a name, but it's the, uh, the peanut butter taffy orange and black and the twist on the side. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Like, Get out of here garbage, with that. Garbage. I don't know who buys it, I don't why even... they would buy it, but it's there. It's there, yeah. I don't even know what that tastes like because I would never... <laughs> dignify no. that candy with yeah, <laughs> my mouth it's trash those neighbors <clears throat> hate you like, i mean stay away from them yeah i mean they're probably very cheap right you go to a bulk barn or something load up <laughs> i don't know i don't know but lewis black remember he had this stand-up where he talks about how they made candy corn in like one year like in the 40s and then every halloween like the next day everyone goes to the trash and they clean it off like, they've only made it once, but it keeps coming back, like, the same batch because nobody eats it. And that's <laughs> how I feel about this candy. It's, like, it just, like, you know, filters back and then just keep Like, there's no way they're making this. Like, right. there can't be a demand <laughs> for this. It's truly horrifying. Mm-hmm. So, there you go. Thank, Thank you, Maeve. Maeve, so much for those questions. Everyone's got to follow at Maven of Honor. For just the most mystical, magical tweets. Mm, that's true. And the next questions come, oh my goodness, from friend of the show at I Am Space Girl. Yay! <laughs> oh, it's Sky. We're Yay! excited. Everyone's Them's excited. <laughs> People are cheering. We got a Sky question. Bells are ringing. Yay! All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, she says, Joby! Yay! I love you! If you had to choose between the powers of invisibility <laughs> and flight... She sounds nothing like that, by the way. Which would you choose and why? <laughs> and if you did choose flight, <laughs> would you no carry me to all my chosen destinations <laughs> in a specially designed sky harness? <laughs> I asked specifically, did she mean... A sky harness, like, for flight in the sky or one specifically designed for her. She meant specifically designed for her. Yeah, this is a sky um, harness. This is an 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 I am space girl harness. I love how there is no pressure with this question at all. But I, I thought about it and I'm like, you know, I can feel invisible all on my own. I definitely would choose flight just for the sky harness and for sky to hang out with me and I'll take her wherever. I have a question about the sky harness. Do you have to make the sky harness or is sky providing the harness and just like is wearing it? We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. I'm, I know that I I can envision that we would look cool as hell. (laughs) First of all, I'd imagine like matching helmets and goggles or something. Absolutely. The scarf. And she's a tiny person. Like in my mind, I can fit her in my pocket. So, um, we would look cool as hell. Like I I would absolutely a hundred percent all day. Sky harness. (laughs) Sky harness. Mm -hmm. And what's that up in the sky? Oh, my. (laughs) It's Joby and Sky. I'm more interested in what these destinations are. Like, is she talking about the grocery (laughs) store? Am I going to have to carry things? Yeah. You know, like, it's a sky destination. Are we going to space? I'm going to have to ask her. I mean, that would be a great comic. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Where are you guys going (laughs) this time? Mm-hmm. But right. we talk a lot and um, we joke that we have our own podcast. It's just that it's on the phone and nobody else can hear it from, <laughs> yeah. like, but us. But it's funny. So that'll be our next episode. That's a top 10 podcast for sure. <laughs> okay. Okay. And truly one of the greats um, at I'm Space Girl. Everyone's got to go check out Absolutely. her podcast if you want to hear what she sounds like for realsies. Because <laughs> that, uh, that was not an impression. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> the, that's true. So that's Sky also. To my voice. I hope you're enjoying this episode so far. And thank you for listening. And thank Yay. you for the great question. Uh, mm-hmm. And thanks for being great. All right. The next question comes to us from, oh, my friend of the show. 
at Flaccid Umbrella. I'm talking about Eddie. Oh my. Shout out to Eddie, friend of the show. You got to go listen to his episode. That's one of my favorite episodes. Uh, I got so many notes about that one. They're like, wow, that episode was cool. So you got to go listen to it. Love him. Shout out to Eddie. And the question from Eddie is What is your favorite? (laughs) <laughs> okay, so I know what he's saying, and I'll help translate. Thank you. Um, he's asking who my favorite baby boy is. Yes, my ba ba ba, because that's what I call him. He's my <laughs> um, he's my ba ba ba. And go, it t- going back to like catchphrases, like when I started out, I used to type like that all the time. Okay. With the UHs. Yeah. And Eddie's one of the only people who could read me. <laughs> right. And so he calls me mama and I call him my blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I mean, like, I remember when he was 19, you know, yeah. like in. He's just, you know, just so special. And so he knows that he is my favorite blah, blah, blah. He's just like my son in the Congo of Africa. You know? <laughs> like you know he's what? So he's now. my favorite blah, 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 too. He's so great. <laughs> you got to go listen to the episode, like I'm saying, and you got to follow at Flaccid Umbrella, I would say, and check out his Instagram because he's really great. Uh, he's got he's a great. really artistic eye. Uh, all of mm-hmm. his, his cro- chromatic pictures are really great, and uh, mm-hmm. I really enjoy Eddie. And shout out to him. Just the best mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. over there in Africa, holding it down on Twitter. Mm-hmm. He knows more, you know, pop culture references than any of us. You know, <laughs> like he's just too cool. Too cool. Too cool for school indeed. So thank mm-hmm. you very much, Eddie. And the next question comes to us from Laura's potion at And I Like <laughs> Laura. And the question is... Hi. Yeah, why are brown-eyed people superior over everybody else? <laughs> Kiss. Kiss emoji. Um, I am a brown-eyed girl, so I do appreciate I appreciate all colors of eye, of course. That is a great answer. Um, I do. My kids have a great mix. But, I mean, we've got the great Van Morrison song, but not many others you know Mm -hmm. i remember growing up and feeling like everyone is thinking about blue eyes and so i would say brown eyes what was the question are they superior (laughs) yeah it it was sort of a looking for confirmation that they are superior not really a question they're superior because they're the big b on the punnett square you know like genetically brown eyes are dominant yes so if you want to say like superior dominant that's why Mm mm-hmm Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes Scientifically sense. Scientifically speaking. Yeah. yeah. Genetically, there's more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, they're big B. Yeah, if it mm-hmm. was brown eyes versus the world, you got the numbers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There you go. All right. So thank you very oh, much, Laura, you. for that question. And mm-hmm. oh, the next question comes to us from Danny at Marty mm-hmm. Grown. And the question is Does music mix the bourgeoisie and the rebels? Ah. <sighs> Madonna says so. Right? That's her lyric. Absolutely. I mean, and Danny has been following me for a long time. Um, We've been following each other, and he really appreciated my music tweets. I used to tweet about music all the time. Like, that was (laughs) kind of my go to thing. So I appreciate. Wait, like um, music in general or music the specific, the Madonna? I, I got to tell you, I'm not sure I have a Madonna tweet, um, but it, when I saw it, it didn't surprise me that he would have a music question. Um, and so um, I, and I'm guessing, like, if that's a real question, like, does it mix? Absolutely. Um, music brings everybody together, right? I think, I think, <laughs> I think, uh... <laughs> I think that is uh, true. <laughs> I was hoping for it to kick in right. There we, uh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's the part. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. <laughs>
Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Everyone who's Perfect. listening uh, and didn't want that to happen. So thank you very much, <laughs> Danny, for that great question. Thank Shout you, out to Danny. at Marty Grown. All right. We got a few more questions here. And the next Yay. ones come in from Katie Didn't at pork underscore chop underscore Yay. hair. I love the questions are, I'm giving you a pie you love and a pie you mm. hate. What are the mm. pies? I love cherry pie. I could eat cherry pie all day. And I don't love, I've had a really hard relationship with pumpkin pie. Mm. It's been tumultuous. And I don't want to cause any drama about it. But I used to love pumpkin pie. I loved it all throughout my childhood until middle school. And then I had to do this how-to presentation and you could choose and I, I I chose how to make pumpkin pie and I was really excited about this and I had to make a whole bunch of them and bring a whole bunch into school and in middle school and it was just a day that was really hot and I kind of had to sit through seven classes with the the very strong <laughs> pumpkin pie smell right and in my mind when it was time everyone's eating it and it, it and it's like this like weird 80s movie montage where everyone's like shoving it in their face, yeah, like shoving it at me. Smash cuts of close to ups. Be, yeah, <laughs> to their like, and mouths. I'm dying. I have a VHS tape because they videoed the presentations and I'm trying to get through it and I'm gagging. Oh. Like I'm turning my head and gagging <laughs> with this smell and the visuals of it. And since then, mm-hmm. me and Pumpkin Pie, Pumpkin Pie and I have not been speaking. Damn. Well, it was kind of your fault, but yeah, I can understand why. (laughs) To no pumpkin pie. That's it. So cherry, yes. Pumpkin, no. No. Mm -mm. I wish it well, though. I I hope that it's it's had a good life. It's it's doing fine. Second question from Katie. Do you consider yourself the storm or the rainbow? (laughs) I had, I had to think about that because I love a storm. It's like my favorite sound. Like I'll sit outside during the storm and I sleep to this Ooh, yeah. app that's like White this noise. storm sim. Yeah, and I I love it and I can customize it. And it just, as I get older, it gets louder and louder and louder. <laughs> it's, it's like a monsoon in my room. And I love it. But I felt like that's not me though. I'm enjoying it. So I must be the rainbow if I love the storm so much. Right. Because there's a storm the and then you're sleeping and that's the rainbow. Mm, I think so. Well, Thank you, Cicada. You oh, I call her. <laughs> Katie didn't. Um, you know, because down here we call cicadas the bugs. We call them oh, Katie did. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Katie did. Katie didn't. And so, um yeah, thank you, Katie Didn't, Pork Chop Hair. Thank you. And one final question from Katie Didn't. French fries, shoestring fries, steak fries, waffle fries, or curly fries? <laughs> All of them. How could you choose? I couldn't pick a favorite color before I pick a favorite fry. I would say Desert all Island, you can only have one type of fry. <laughs> what is it? I or, would, I, then in that case, it's going to be a waffle fry. Ooh. Um, I, yeah, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like a waffle fry would be most helpful in a desert <laughs> situation. Because of the, the, the size of it. Yeah, or I don't know. Maybe I could build something out of them. Okay, yeah. I'm taking it into like a totally different <laughs> like direction. A survival but, situation. <laughs> but I'm I feel like the, all the fries kind of taste the same to me, just like the different shaped pasta. It is. You know, the it's same. really a texture thing more it than is. it is like an ingredient thing. You know, you're you're like, right. Right. I don't I don't see why I can't love them all. You can love them all. It's literally okay. the same okay. thing. It's a potato. Thank you. Thank you. But waffle fries is the answer. Okay, thank you very too. much, Katie. <laughs> And we got a few more questions here. The next question comes to us from okay. Doth that Doth the Doth. Yay. And the question is, who is Uncle Dicky? <laughs> That's very silly for him to ask that because um, <laughs> Uncle Dicky is his uncle. That is silly. So, <laughs> so I'm like, that is the answer. He has an Uncle Dicky. And it's really funny because he kind of um, 
has this bit where he talks about Uncle and and really everybody has an Uncle Dicky, and that's kind of the joke. And it's yes. like that uncle that is kind of like, um, you know, like he's the, he's the guy that you haven't talked to in years, and anytime he comes up, everyone rolls his eyes. That's Uncle Dicky. Of course, everyone's got that uncle. Mm-hmm. And if you don't, it's you. It's you, exactly. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much, Uncle Dicky. And the next question comes to us from John at Yay! Arf Measures on Twitter. Love John. One You're of the best. The best. Yeah, mm-hmm. so funny. Consistently very, very funny all the time. And mm-hmm. all day. The question is, What would be your top three things you do as president? I got to tell (laughs) you, I told him, I was like, you had to take it political, you know? Yeah, we're having a nice conversation. And I know, I'm like, it's real easy for England to say, you know? He's like, "Mm," you know? And um, because I, I, of course, like my, like, if I'm being serious, like my top three things would be, I want everybody here to have a home and food and health care. Like, that's really easy. And these are um, rights that everyone should have and not have them dangled in front of them for a vote. So that's that. But when I had <laughs> and I was like, dude, what? And he was like, make it funny. You know, <laughs> he was like cotton candy. I love cotton candy. Yeah. Um, you know, like cancel Monday and all this stuff. And I'm like, dude, it's so bad here right now that I would, I could not make a joke. Yeah, you could not make a joke. <laughs> you know, I'm like, that. we already have a joke up there, you know? So well, I was like, no, I'm sticking with home, food, healthcare. That's it. That's what you get, John. There you go. It's a great platform. Everyone mm-hmm. vote Joe. Vote Joe. 2020. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Official official announce, announcement here on <laughs> this, this podcast. Is it. <laughs> We're doing it. This is it. All right. So thank you very much, John, and everyone should thank be following at ARF Measures. It's like half mm-hmm. measures, but like a dog said it. Okay. Right. <laughs> All right. And a few more questions. The next one comes to us from Mowgli at holy mm-hmm. underscore Mowgli. Great tweeter. And the question is Hulu or Netflix. You got to give the background. This is a reference. Some of these it questions yeah, I know. are a little inside. So Some of cool. them are references, and that's what's great. Right. Uh, but we should explain it for the rest okay. of the listeners. This, that, that reference is a tweet of mine um, from last year sometime. It was actually one of my first big tweets was um, me saying, I think, or no, 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 no. It it's a, it's a back him. and forth. So I would say, uh, I think we should see other people. That's it. So it's a him. I think we should see other people. And I say, is that on Hulu or Netflix? <laughs> Which I have learned is a movie on Netflix. Yeah. So you get a lot of people replying. <laughs> that. So yeah, a lot of people are like, it's a, it's a movie it's a called movie and it's Other a- People, <laughs> and you can see it. On Netflix. Thank you. <laughs> I, I'm very, I'm super aware of this now. And um, I love that tweet. That tweet started out all the characters and, and just kept getting knocked down and knocked down and knocked down. And I tried to tweet it like eight times and it kept bombing. <laughs> and then just the last time, obviously, it did well. You and, did. Um, you cracked so the code. I love that tweet. Thank you, Mo. And if I had to choose, I mean, I I like, like, everything I like on Hulu is great. Like, the things that I go back to Hulu for almost outshine what I watch. You know, the new things that come on Netflix. Yeah. You know? But Hulu is so limited. Mm. So I would have to say Netflix. Right. You know? Okay, well, so uh, what are you watching right now? What TV are you recommending on the spot? Sheesh, what am I not watching? I went, like, I went, like, seven years with no television. Like, I was just, like, I would catch, like, you know, some, like, you know, like, mysteries at the museum, like, on a Saturday morning or something here and there. <laughs> but, um, so I didn't want, I wasn't engrossed in anything for a long time. And then in the last, like, two years, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like I know everything. Like, I'm watching every, I'm watching, like, three things at once. Right. And so, to as of today, 
I'm caught up on Succession on HBO. I love it. And The Righteous Gemstones on HBO. I also love that. But I'm getting nervous because the things I'm watching are starting to end. And you feel like these boats are sinking and you have to like quick <laughs> step onto another one. Yeah. So what are you want? Give me something. No, I was, I was actually looking for recommendations because we're <laughs> <laughs> looking for the next thing to watch. Those right? are both good. I, we, I think it will be succession for us uh, next. Oh, I, I we haven't really watched like it. It's going to, but I'm warning you, it's going to be slow the first couple episodes, but if you can hang in. With oh yeah, we can Macaulay hang in. Culkin's brother. We, we watched all of Twin Peaks, so okay. if there's a, if that's a recommend. <laughs> okay. we, we can hang in there. Yeah, yeah, you can hang in. There. Yeah, you we can hang. hang. But it's got it's on its second season now. Yeah, and, um, and people I, love I really the intro. Like <laughs> we oh yeah, <laughs> wildly intro. memeable intro. Okay, so there you go. Thank you very much, Moog, Thank you, Mo. and everyone got to be following him. Okay, mm-hmm. a few more questions now. We got a question coming in to us from front of the show. You're green. Yay! It's Billy. And the question is bad onions. (laughs) And the answer is there are none. There are no bad onions. No bad onions. You think this is. I like all of the onions. However, you're going to make the onions, it's going to be good. No, I. I wasn't sure. Do you think this is a reference to your tweet? Which one? I think is the reference of your t- to your tweet. Um, oh, I get it. Fun onions. Oh, well, it's kind of, I could see that. It's also, um, I thought he was referencing an inside joke um where <laughs> yeah it's definitely like, your I, thing I, like, I don't i don't need to go like too far into it and i don't want to start calling people's names out but um brent really likes onions <laughs> and we tease him about him liking his his love of onions a lot so i didn't know if that was it or um that must be or it. it could be it could be <laughs> the fun onions i love that tweet that's one of those tweets that people will come to me and say I think about this all the time. Yes. You know, and that means so much to me. I don't have a, I don't have a mega viral. I don't have like a ton of virals, but I feel like there's certain tweets that it doesn't matter how big or small they are. I love when people are like, I think about this because I have, you know, a hundred tweets from other people that I'm walking around through my life and thinking about, you know, so I really like that. So bad onions. I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm like, I'm trying to mush it together like Funyuns, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Billy. Yeah, like Bunions. I'm, I'm like, I won't, I'm, I wasn't going to go there, but okay. He wanted us to. I know, and the answer is no. <laughs> Give Billy what he wants. <laughs> <I won't. laughs> it's Bunions. <laughs> mm, I'm, I'm, okay. <laughs> All then, right. Yes, all right. All right. Fun mm-hmm. onions. Okay. Fun onions. And now, Joe, we yep. done did it. We've arrived at the final question. <sighs> so thank okay. you to everyone who has sent in a question to at FOTS pod or DM to question secretly like this <gasps> next person. Oh, no. I'm not even prepared. Legendary <laughs> Twitter account. Merman 5, I'm talking about Brent, just mentioned on the show. Some of the greatest <laughs> tweets of all time mentioned on the show back when we used to read tweets on this show. So many amazing tweets. And oh, it is Brent. He's so great. I love him. So great. Uh, mm-hmm. One of the all-timers. Yep. And the He qu- likes onions. <laughs> qu- <laughs> the question for Joe is, was the Grink there? I'm gonna die. <laughs> I'm gonna die. We did it. We made it all the way through the questions with another inside joke question. And it has worked. Shout out to Brent. She's she's dying of laughter. He's done it again. Truly a legend. Oh my god. <laughs> mm, that's a question for him. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, man. Okay. My real laugh. Oh, man. I'm sorry about that. We can edit it out. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. 
Brent. You got her. <laughs> got me good. Classic Brent. <sighs> so one of his tweets, it's it's really funny. Um, I really love the concept of it. Um, <laughs> I just read it. <laughs> I'm not going to get it perfect, uh. but um, about he's in a, you know, it, it's about him being in a really bad accident and, like, I think he was even missing for a year. And he, when he gets back, he's telling the story of what happened. And his friend, who um, he once was in a text group with, and he, he typoed and said, the Grink instead of the Grinch. He immediately asks, was the Grink there? <laughs> and um, it is funny. I mean, and it cracks me up. And my son, Leland, um, he watches the Grinch year round um this is like a staple in my household oh real grinch and, head <laughs> oh yeah he's a real grinch head and um so it's, it's so we watch it all the time so i am here for all grinch material <laughs> so I'm we gotta get leland it. in on this joke <laughs> yes he, he'd love it the green and um so since he tweeted that i asked Brent all the time if the Grink was there. So um, for him to kick it back to me kills me. So, <laughs> and, so and privately. Yeah, you know? it was a secret <laughs> question. Very I tricky. Know. It's only been done well, a few that, times. Well, I guess I could say that the, the answer is absolutely the Grink is here. <laughs> the Grink is He's with always us always, here. yes. The Grink never leaves. I think that's the, the right answer. Uh, right. And I've, I've located the tweet uh, from Brent, <clears throat> and Thank it you. is uh, – me telling my story how I survived a plane crash and lived on a deserted island for a year. It was crazy. Friend who once got a text from me where I accidentally called the Grinch the Grink. Was the Grink there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got him. <laughs> got him. Oh, man. <laughs> So obviously oh, yes, everyone the green is always here. Needs sure. to be following Brent at Merman Five. Who's not? <laughs> at this but point, okay. if you're not, yeah, there but, is okay, yeah, seriously something sure. you should not be listening to this pod at least. Uh, <laughs> if you ain't following Brent, so it's a mm-hmm. bear with the AK forty seven surfing on a shark. Mm-hmm. That's the uh picture you want to look for. Classic bear shark. To yeah. be <laughs> to make sure. Joe, I think we done did it. All right. Well, try to make me sound intelligent and attractive, smart and funny. No problem. I'll fix That'd it all great. in post. Uh, <laughs> and then we, I will end the podcast by playing the theme, and then we will say our goodbyes. So thank you so much for being on the pod. Great tweeting as always. You're the best. Thank you. You're the best. No, thank you. And (laughs) everyone listening, you got to go follow Joe. Send her a note saying how great she is. Oh, man. You too. (laughs) To you, Steven. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode with Joe. Now, you'd be smart to follow at What Joe Talking About on Twitter for great fun stuff, hilarious tweets, and great friendship. For all of the classic Friends of the Show episodes, visit www.stevenwskinner.com. Or find it on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Please leave a rating and review. I will be forever in your debt. Be sure to follow at FOTS Pod on Twitter. Find posts about the latest episodes and when to send in questions to be asked on the show. As for me, you can follow me at Skinner Steven on Twitter. No good tweets lately, but that means I'm due. All right, thanks to Ruby Coast for the music, thanks to Kylie Davidson for the theme, and thank you so very much for listening. I am Stephen W. Skinner. Have a great one. <laughs>